We are only a couple weeks away from iOS 18 being fully released to the public, and I've been running it on an old iPhone 13 Pro, and I've been using this for about three or four weeks now, and I gotta say, I'm actually thoroughly impressed with iOS 18, and before we get into it, do not install the beta on your personal device. iOS 18 will be released around the week of September 16th, as this is when we expect to see the iPhone 16 series fully release the public, the Apple Watch Ultra 3, the Apple Watch Series 10, and maybe even more at Apple's upcoming September event. But make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to have a full in-depth video when Apple announces the event, what to expect, and what even is going to come after the event ends. So make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on for that. But now, let's get into the real iOS 18 and overall my experience. So we're going to start off with probably one of the biggest changes to iOS 18, which is actually one of, I think, my favorite features, and that is the customization aspect of iOS 18. So as you can see right here, my lock screen, very simple. It's the blue iOS 18 wallpaper, I still have the flash, the camera at the bottom. But that's actually not necessarily the case. But based off of that ima this image, you wouldn't be able to tell. So we go ahead and edit or customize the iOS 18 wallpaper. This is the new dynamic wallpaper for iOS 18, and it dynamically changed throughout the day based off of what it feels it wants to change to. So I have also gotten some kind of weird, I guess you could say, combinations as you can see here as it flashes through them. But you can change, you know, the time, the widgets, just like as you can before. But now at the bottom of the screen, we can finally get rid of the flashlight and camera. So now you can either have no widget there or you can have the flashlight and camera. Personally, I have, I've pretty much tried all of these and have ended up defaulting back to the flashlight and camera. But that is just because of the fact that I think I'm so used to them. I just, really cannot expect them to be anywhere else. Now, while I don't use the camera, I still did find myself essentially reaching for that control, even though it wasn't there. Now, if we swipe over, we do have the default yellow, pink, blue, and purple wallpaper, or, of course, the dynamic one, which I've been using. So, if we go back to the wallpaper now, if we swipe up, we go to the home screen. Now, the home screen, as of right now, looks the same, but that actually is no longer the case. So, if we come over here to the second page of mine, we can now place app icons wherever we want. So, if we want Snapchat to be closer to the top, but Instagram, you know, X, Be Real, and YouTube Studio, for example, to be on the bottom, and then, you know, have Find My and Snapchat above that, we can do that, and we can just swipe up and place them wherever we want now. But the customization doesn't end there. So if we click on this edit in the top left, we now have this new option to hit customize. So we hit customize, we're presented with this new icon menu. So we have light, which is the default icons that we have had for a very long time now. But once you hit light, nothing's gonna change. We also can tint the icons dark. Now, some icons are applied automatically, others are not because this is still in beta. That's really the only reason why, as you can see, you know, Snapchat and Instagram didn't change over, but Find My and YouTube Studio did. We can also go to Automatic, which will essentially just take your app icons during the day to be light and then at night to be dark. But if you want to get even more crazy than that, you can go over to Tint and make your app icons whatever color you want. So if we want to go over to a purple, let's say, we can now make all of our app icons purple. Now, you do also get the ability to have your wallpaper tinted darker to showcase to showcase your icons, or you can also essentially untint it and make it brighter. I know personally at night, I'm a big fan of the automatic with the dimming at night and then essentially not being dim during the day just because it helps my eyes. I'm also a light mode during the day, dark mode at night user, which is why I really like that feature. But if we go back to our home screen now, you can see that all of my icons on my home screen, my widgets, are all tinted this purple with, which just looks very nice overall. And if we go over to the app library as well, all of my app icons are now purple. Now, while we're in this app library, you're also going to notice this new hidden folder. So with iOS 18, you now get the ability to hide an app from essentially view and notifications and everything. So if we want to hide Snapchat, let's say, we can just go ahead and press on it and we can do one of two things. We can hit require face ID. And then when you're here, it, you can require face ID, which would just mean the app is going to stay there. You're still going to essentially get notifications and stuff. 
but if you want to hide it and essentially have no one be able to see it, you can hit hide and require face ID, which is now going to pop up and tell you that if you hide Snapchat, it'll no longer be visible and it'll also be hidden, but you'll also get no alerts, no phone calls, notifications, or anything from Snapchat. So if you hit hide app, it's now going to just disappear from your home screen. If you swipe over, you might not know where it is. It's going to be right here in this hidden folder if you scan with your face and now you can access Snapchat. So. I definitely think the ability to hide the apps is definitely very nice to have. And if you want to just essentially unhide it, you can click press and hold and hit don't don't hide. And then because I have it set to go into my app library, it just defaults back to its original location. Now, iOS 18 is also big on the AI features, but that's only if you're going to have an iPhone 16 series or an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max. So this is my personal iPhone 15 Pro Max, and I'm not running iOS 18 on this because it is not meant for your personal device. And I'm going to say it again, do not put it on your personal device. There's no reason to ruin your personal device. Now, as you can just see, my iPhone just locked and now my wallpaper is purple. So it does seem to change about every hour, which I just think is very nice to have. Now, another big thing going in tune with this customization has been the control center. So if we swipe down and access my control center, you can see that my control center no longer looks like the iOS 17 one. Now, you can fully customize it to however you want. So you just, just like on iOS, you just press and hold, hit add control, and then whatever control you want to pick, you can go ahead and pick. Now, some of them can be resized to a certain size, other ones can't. It really depends on the application and how well or small you can get it to fit and still be functional. So if we want to go ahead and adjust one of the ones I have, like this ping my watch, for example, I can now make it two panels. Or if I really want to make it bigger, I can now make Shazam and make it a big tile just like I have the home app up there or I can entirely remove it straight from my control center. You do also get multiple pages so right now by default you get four. You get the favorites which is the one we're all used to, music, home, and connectivity. So of these pages I personally have slimmed it down to three although for this video I did bring them back in but I do have to say having pages has been much more enjoyable than I thought it would be. Now, those are hands-on with the big customization aspects of iOS 18, but we are getting so much more with iOS 18. We're getting the ability to have custom tapbacks and messages. Mail is gonna be completely redesigned. We're gonna get a passwords app by default that's going to include all of your passwords and be able to find them in a simple place. We're gonna have a smarter Safari that's gonna have highlights and the ability to even hide content. We're getting support for RCS, which is gonna make messages so much better. Satellite messages. Photos is gonna be redesigned to just be even more more photo person focused and be a little easier to use. I have to say in the beginning I thought it was very clunky, although now that I've been using it, iOS 17 is so much clunkier. But of the customization aspects from iOS 18 and even the quality of life improvements we're getting with iOS 18, I personally am very excited for this update to be on my personal iPhone. But make sure you're subscribed for all of the Apple event coverage coming in the upcoming weeks as we're going to dive deep into all of it and even the new iPhones and Apple Watch. So make sure you're subscribed for that. And if you want to hit like while you're down there, I'd greatly appreciate that. But I want to hear your thoughts about iOS 18 and what you think is essentially the game-changing feature or what's not because this upgrade is going to be a big one, in my opinion. But I want you to remember, today's a good day to be a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next one.